So spring is here, and abundant sunshine and frequent showers have provided nutrients and the ability for plants to grow in the shallows in most pond environments. And now algae started to appear. And a little algae is okay, but a lot, ooh, that can be a big problem. In this video segment, we're going to go over the three most common algae types in pond environments, as well as biological and chemical control options for you as managers to get your system back under control. Before we start this segment, let's make sure that we're all on the same page. A lot of people will use common names, which can be very confusing, such as moss, seaweed, that gross looking stuff that occurs on the surface of my pond. But realistically, we're not entirely sure as to what we're referring to when we use said common names. So, it's important to recognize the type of species that you have in your pond. For instance, in my hand right now, I'm actually holding two different species of algae. One that has very different growth characteristics than the other. So it's important that we recognize which species that we're dealing with, because the chemical options and the biological options for treatment can vary between species. So on this dock are three different species of algae. I've got cara or skunkweed, coontail, and filamentous algae. Let's start with cara or skunkweed. Cara really looks like submergent aquatic plant growth, but it actually has no root network. It's very brittle to the touch, and when you break it apart and promptly smell it, it will actually give off a smell very reminiscent of skunk musk, given skunkweed is the common name. Next I've got coontail, and coontail will grow in these nice big bushels with very fluffy ends, as you can see, and it'll actually float along the surface of the pond and get distributed pretty much wherever sunlight will allow it to grow. Filamentous algae really starts uh, on the benthos or substrates, growing in these long uh, microscopic filamentous forms until it reaches the surface, and then it'll start breaking apart, and it'll actually float across the pond and redevelop on edges. Now, really distinguishing between these three different species is important because the actual chemical and biological control options differ between all three. For skunkweed or cara, the best option for use really is going to be a granular cutrine because it'll actually occur on the substrate vast majority of the time growing in shallows. Now, for coontail, aquathol K is probably the most important chemical choice to use because it'll actually burn this plant. Filamentous algae, you want to use a granular cutrine when it's actually occurring on the benthos or on a substrate. However, when it comes up to the top, sometimes you would like to use, uh, let's say, a liquid cutrine. Now, for biological options, both triploid grass carp, Mozambique tilapia will control all three. However, um, triploid grass carp will really focus on cara and coontail predominantly, while Mozambique tilapia will focus more on the filamentous algae. So from a biological treatment perspective, it's important to know how much of this you actually have in your pond of the three different species, because then you can select the proper biological control agent that's correct for you. If you're using chemicals, be sure that you're only treating small sections at a time to avoid rapid increases in biological oxygen demand, which can result in fish kills. So whether or not you have coontail, cara, filamentous algae, you can always find a treatment option that will work for you, whether or not you want to use chemicals or go the biological route. I hope this has been informative and thanks for watching.